Hi, my name is Andre Gallardo. Sorry I'm sitting down, I have a hurt foot. But And here's my speech on, the pro, um, on good debate. I'm not shy about heated debate or passionate discourse, but when people get crazy or rude, that's a buzzkill. There's got to be a better code of conduct, some basic adequate. Rapper Most Deaf is right. The art of debate needs a better code of conduct in order to continue helping our society make better decisions. During my peer questionnaire, I noticed that half of the class chose rarely when asked how often they debated. This is alarming to me because, as Warren Shaw states, debate is an art which, through the ages, has been considered the chief means of advancement. The purpose of this informative speech is to address some simple rules to a good debate. These rules can be used between you, uh, your friends, family, or officials. The three main points I will cover are picking an educated topic, the proper use of facts, and making a real attempt to understand and agree with the opposite viewpoint, and an attempt to not make it the debate personal. Picking a good, de a good educated topic is very important to a good debate. What is an educated topic? An educated topic needs to have real relevance and real actual things. It's a topic that is not based on re that is not based in conspiracy or lies, but in reality. An educated topic is a topic that those debating have a good understanding for or know what they're talking about. It's an, it's important to in order to debate in the pursuit of a real end goal. An educated topic helps the transfer of real information and can stop the spread of conspiracy and lies. How do we pick an educated topic? Simple. By looking for reliable, unbiased sources, sources that, quest that leave the questioning to you. Or maybe debate about topics that you've learned in school and academia and college. But regardless, always try to debate with ideas that have a realistic end. Something that could actually be proven or disproven. The proper use of fact is very important in a good debate. It's important because it helps keep the information that is being debated reliable. Using real proper facts also makes makes a debate a good way of educating others. The use of real facts to keep debates useful in modern society by transferring real knowledge to others is priceless. And it also could be used to learn from others. Getting proper facts is not as hard as some may think. You can use sources from reliable news agencies, such as NPR, or think tanks in institutes, such as the Brookings Institute. You could also use any source that is backed by or derives from academia. That is always a good source. Making sure, uh, make sure that you have a good understanding of the source that you're using, so that you can make sure you do not use it in the improper way. Knowing how to use a good fact in debate is also a key to success. You want to use, a f use the facts as to be informative or teaching, not to be ignorant or, or uh, pushing your own ideas. Make sure you use proper language in regards to the level of the understanding of your audience, to not confuse them with big words to sound smart. And don't try to overload the opponent with facts. Know when to use them. The main rules to remember in a debate is to make a real attempt to understand and agree with the opposite viewpoints, and try to make the debate not personal. Agreeing with others is a key factor in a good debate. No one likes when you use a good fact that you worked hard to, to find the real, the, the real facts about, and then your, your opponent just simply ignores it. By listening to the opposition and attempting to agree with some, any point of their of their point of the argument, it can ensure that you fully understand and hear what he is saying, as well as he him knowing that you are listening. You might say it's hard to agree with someone when you're debating. Try. Listen close, and if he's using real facts and good sources, you'll be able to hear something, no matter how small, that you agree on. Debates are known to push others' buttons and cause the two sides to get very passionate and heated in their arguments. By keeping the debate not personal, you allow the debate to stay on topic rather than starting a fight. To do this, you should simply attempt to agree with some of their viewpoints and allow the opposition 
as a chance to speak when it's his turn. Most of all, do not use personal stories. With these steps, they will help you gain the main goal of a debate, and that is to come to an end goal. Debate is a key tool when discussing two sides of a point of a certain idea or point of view. How a, how a debate should work is that someone has an idea and another person opposes that idea. The opposer challenges each f uh, proposed flaw in the said idea and the creator defends it. If the creator of the idea can defend his work until there is no more proposed flaws, then you have a good idea. If the opposer finds a major flaw that the creator cannot defend, then it's a bad idea. At the end of, at the end of the debate, the idea should either be debunked or proven. Hence a good debate. Overall, I hope you learned why debate is important, how it helps educate others, all while trying to perfect an idea. By using educated topics, the proper use of facts, and agreeing and not becoming personal, you should be able to hold a good debate. Not everyone uses these steps, so before you debate a subject, try and go over these guidelines with them. Thank you.